Hi, everybody. Welcome to Tiki Talk, Colleen O'Neill. Jen Sheffer. And you know, Tiki Talk is just great for so many topics. And one of the ones that we wanted to talk today, which I think, having been a former teacher, um, is divorce, school, and our education system, and how that they are all interwoven, and how we do nothing as a society to, do, to, to, to help alleviate any of that or to help our children. So we're all about mental health, anxiety, depression during COVID. Mm -hmm. How about mental health, anxiety during divorce? Right, for, for what's happened. Yeah, because that's, I think, in all honesty, I think any, COVID's been stressful for every human on the planet, mm -hmm. but children have stress on the daily with things like divorce. And you're right, it, it's not addressed, it's not handled. Um, you know, my kids are, are in the public school system, middle school and high school. And my son, who's the older one, has probably at least maybe two thirds of his peer group are from divorced parents. But the only reason they talk amongst themselves sometimes, you know, it's like, oh, it's my, I'm going to my dad's this weekend, or oh, you're divorced too. But I don't think that they speak to each other about how they've coped with it or how it's affected them. How being a backpack kid is, because that's really what mm -hmm. you are, right? Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, it, you know, you got to drop the stuff off. You got to pick the stuff up. It's just, it's more than the kids. But for them, for them, like that's far more stressful than I think we give them credit for. And you're right, there are no tools in the place that they spend the majority of their day to help them cope with that. Or if you're having a bad day, at home and you come to school, you may mouth off in class. Well, that's kind of understandable if you know what the kids are going through. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think, so here's my problem. You you have a, I'm gonna say, 35 to 50% of that's a big the swing. United States, but it's a big swing, but some people will say it's 50%. It actually is a little less for the divorce rate in the country, but it doesn't even matter. It's it's a huge amount of no, it's a huge number. And for huge us, amount of number. It's we're not amount. even drinking it. Know. But what I'm trying to say is like, and it's almost epidemic in a way. Yeah. If, if it's a crisis, it is. And we do nothing about it. No. We send our kids to school. We expect them to do well on their standardized tests, whether it's state standardized tests or just standardized tests for SATs or whatever it's going to be. Placement for the next year. Absolutely. And we don't have any tools we give them. We have sex ed. Mm -hmm. We don't have divorce ed. We health. don't have family we have health. health, but it's not family dynamics. Right. No, no. So you, the, I mean, they know what, what the reproductive organs look like and they can have sex and they'll know what'll happen, but you know, they, what happens if a relationship fails? And I think even more so I, that would be a great way to talk about relationships in general, because Every first relationship ends in heartbreak. Somebody gets their heart broken. And how Amen. do you deal with that? And no kid is going to say anything to you and their kids committing suicide because of broken hearts. So, you know, they don't address that either. So you can then maybe the concept of divorce might not be as difficult. No, they started addressing some schools, some systems, some states start addressing uh, to be aware of domestic violence yeah. in a relationship. Or sexual predators. Right, we're always talking about that, but really the bulk of what just family dynamics, mm -hmm. like you may not have a kid who's doing domestic violence if somebody was talking to him about what's really going on in his or her life. Right. She may not put up with it or he may not put up with it if somebody were to talk with them about what's really going on in their life. And I think it's incumbent upon adults, adults but the adults don't handle divorce well, never mind telling the kids to handle it. So we're well. all fucked up. And that, uh, basically, well, that's good news. It is good news. Makes however, me feel better. however, if we're all about the best interests of our children, sure. which is what everybody says they are, where are the tools in our educational system to take care of that? You yep. have social workers who are overwhelmed, guidance counselors, there's not enough of them given that I taught in a school with 1500 people. We did not have enough guidance counselors and social workers for 1500 kids. Well, that's an interesting point because guidance counselors really don't do anything until high school. So like my middle schooler doesn't have a guidance counselor. My high schooler has a house master, a pod leader or some nonsense and a guidance counselor. The guidance counselor was helping him with his classes for next year with what it takes to be a well-rounded student for college entrance you know like all of those things that are definitely more relatable but i don't know what the other ones do 
well, is anybody taking the time that maybe your child isn't emotionally ready for for college, well, ba- yes. never mind grade wise. You can be grade wise ready, but yeah. not emotionally ready. And talking to them and helping them problem solve and up, up leveling their emotional IQ, not only your SAT score. But like, where is all that? And I, for me, I'm just, it's very you frustrating. You think it's budget related? I mean, we hear everything is budget related. I mean, are, it's all. Almost- I think it's ignorance. I'll give you that. But no, I do think it's epidemic I do think in this it's, country. I do think it's budget related. But I don't think we can afford not to. Not to. Yep. But then but what do we get rid of? Because, you know, that's the other side of the coin. So here we go. with the Good cop, bad cop, right? So what happens now? What do you want me to get rid of? Music? I can't get rid of music because the parents will be all over me. Art? I've already done the, max, the most I can getting rid of, you know, art is now only for one quarter and one day a week. You know, you get six art sessions in the course of a school year. It's bullshit. But what do we get rid of? PE, these kids don't do anything outside any, enough like we did when we were younger. Amen. So they're attached to machines and all kinds of other things. And yes, there are organized sports, but not everybody is an athlete. So get the kids outside during the day. But I think you can do, um, I think for me, I would have a universal education curriculum that goes everywhere in the United States because I used to have students that would move from Texas to Connecticut I've already covered what they missed. Right. I'm not going back. They have to now figure it out how to catch up, especially if you're a math teacher. And so, cause it's a building blocks, yep. right? And I was a math teacher, but you should have a standardized curriculum so that children can move about anywhere. Makes sense. You should be, you should have a little bit of a longer school day with shorter class times, mm-hmm. right? And it should be set up, high school should be set up like college. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you have your English class. Tuesday, Thursday, you have your science. So that's how ours is now. So high school right now in Fairfield is that way. But what I find most interesting about the Fairfield school system is they all teach the same information, but not at the same time. So like you said, um, you know, my son had friends in multiple schools and we were all in the same town, but they were learning things that he hadn't gotten to yet. And he had already covered things that they weren't getting to for another three months. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's one of the worst things I think about our educational system. You could move, like you're saying, you could move from this house to that house, be in a different, let's say high school in the same town. Learning something completely different. And learning something completely different. And why is that? It's ridiculous. If you had a standardized curriculum, it makes shifting and moving anywhere you go, your child is always right where they left off. Right. And there's no angst that goes along with being behind or not getting it or having done it already. And or they're missed. bored. And so, but, but again, that goes back to our educational system, not addressing what's in the best in- interest of the children. And, and what about if mom lives in one town, dad lives in another, and then the child want, was living with mom decides, oh, I'd like to live with dad for a little while. You can't even transition to the other school because the curriculum could be very different. So they're either could be behind or they're going to be ahead and be bored. That's and true. so I don't understand, I'm putting it out there to anybody that might see this and understand why we don't have a curriculum that keeps up with family dynamics and the moving parts of almost 50% of our families divorced and we can't have uh, our education, which is what the kids need, keeping up with it. And we don't have the monies invested to help them with their emotional challenges that come with having being families of divorce. That's true. And so I'm going to leave it at that as my frustration here on the Tiki Talk. Because that's what we can do here. And we can talk about that. But I'd love to hear your commentary, especially from divorced parents, about your thoughts on uh, divorce affecting your child and how it has impacted their education. Anyways, bye, everybody. Till next time.